So, we were solving the second order differential equation corresponding to the uh, propagation through a step index fiber and we applied the boundary conditions and the first derivative we just applied the condition that the first derivative should be continuous and we said first derivative should be continuous because the second derivative cannot be discontinuous the equation had second derivative in it and uh, using these identities uh, we ended up with this kind of equation a transcendental equation which had u and w in it and to be able to make it in one variable we defined b which is very important now uh, and we wrote w in terms of uh, v and b and u in terms of v and b and we rewrote the transcendental equations in terms of v and b of which the only unknown is the benefit of doing this was that the only unknown is now uh, which one b v we know for a fiber and for a given wavelength. So, the only unknown is b and a uh, solution will give the b for a given b and once I know b, b is a normalized propagation constant I know the betas and once I know beta I can go back and work out my complete solution because I know my u and w and once I know my u and w I can uh, I know the arguments of the Bessel functions and then I can plot these Bessel functions. So, uh, we said that for a given l, l is constants corresponding to the azimuthal equation. So, you could have l as 0, 1, 2, 3 etcetera. For each l these transcendental equations can give you m possible solutions. So, that leads us to what is called as l p l m modes. For every l you can have m solutions. So, that leads to l p l m modes. l p stands for linearly polarized and why do we call it linearly polarized? See, it is a, a fiber is of uh, circular symmetry. At the moment, we are assuming that no direction is preferred direction. No direction of polarization is a preferred direction of polarization. Okay. And for the in terms of degeneracy, as we talked earlier, it means that my light that is getting coupled into the fiber or the mode that is supported by the fiber could be of arbitrary polarization. And any arbitrary polarization we know that can be resolved into two orthogonal polarizations, which means that each of these LPLM modes can have a two orthogonal polarizations supported. Okay. Now, uh, we were trying to see the solution for L equal to 0 for an example V equal to T 2, we found only one point of intersection and so we say that there is only uh, one mode supported and that corresponds to LP01. And I also showed you an example where uh, V was 6.5 and corresponding to V equal to 6.5, uh, L equal to 0 gave us uh, two solutions. Last time we did a nomenclature for all of this and we named the one which is, so for example, we named this one as LP, L equal to 0 and the first solution. Right? This is the most fundamental mode of the fiber. And why do we name this as LP01 and not this as LP01? We discuss this a bit because the corresponding B is closer to 1. B closer to 1 means the effective index is B was beta square by K naught square minus N2 square by N1 square minus N2 square. This is something useful to remember. So, when B is closer to 1 would mean that beta square is closer to N1 square, the one which is having an effective index more close to the core effective index and that is probably the uh, most supported mode or the strongest mode of the fiber. So, you call this as the fundamental mode, this would be your next higher order mode and of course, we named it as 2 and this 1, 2, 3 is just the number of solutions, okay? which is why you do not have a LP 0, 0, right? because we say the first solution, second solution, third solution or first point of intersection, second point of intersection and so on. But how many points of intersection do you have depends on now what? I mean for example, L equal to 1 here you have two points of intersection. What decides how many points of intersection? For a given L, uh, so for example, for this L you would be solving this transcendental equation. Okay? So, for L equal to 1 you would substitute this as the left hand side you will substitute as J naught divided by 
j 1 and the right hand side will be k naught divided by k 1. Now, how many points of intersection? Of course, you need to take only from 0 to 1, b is restricted to 0 to 1, right. So, that is a very good uh, gives us very uh, limited number of solutions and also uh, you can guess the number of solutions. How? By finding out the zeros and uh, infinities of this equation. See the right hand side is monotonic, it just varies monotonically. The left hand side has some zeros and infinities depending on whether this j naught and j 1 are going to 0 or uh, if j naught goes to 0, it is a 0 left hand side is a 0, j 1 goes to 0, the left hand side is an infinity. So, you can find out the number of zeros and infinities in the range 0 to 1 for a given value of L, right. And from that you can keep guessing how many modes can be there in the system, right. And uh, so, for example, in this case when L became equal to phi, you did not find any point of intersection. So, for L equal to phi, you would have substituted j 4 divided by uh, j 5 and j 4 by j 5 did not have a 0 or infinity in this and it is all values were such that the, the right hand side and the left hand side did not have any point of intersection, right. So, from that point onwards, you do not have any modes in the system. So, this way you can restrict the number of, you can actually find out the number of modes of the system. And what turns out is also that now it does not depend on the uh, type of the fiber, it only depends the solutions are dependent only uh, on these two numbers which is your V and your B. So, once I have a fiber, I have my V and once I have my V, I just substitute find out the transcendental equa equation solution, find out the number of modes and I can now calculate, I can describe the entire profile transverse profile of my mode. But just to review, uh, as your v increases, the number of supported modes increase because v equal to 2 gave us only one solution, v equal to 6.5 gave us many solutions. And why is that happening? That is because as your v increase, as your v increases, uh, of course, the diameter increases, I, my uh, numerical aperture could increase, lambda could decrease, v can increase because of multiple reasons, okay. But mathematically, why do, why do you seem to have multiple different solutions? Uh, as your V increases, uh, you have this argument changing and so the number of zeros and uh, infinities in your Bessel function left side, left side increases and you have multiple such uh, you know family of curves and that is increasing your uh, number of solutions. So, the observation is that as your V increases, the number of modes uh, supported increases. The corresponding value of B, but always ranges between 0 to 1, right, because you want your n effective between restricted between the core index and the uh, cladding index. The value closest to 1 will represent the fundamental mode and the highest order mode will have a value B greater than 0 because that is a bounding point. Whenever you had for example, in the previous case, here was a case where b equal to 0, right. So, the highest order mode, the high, for example, here the highest order mode is LP 0 2, that will always have b greater than 0. This one is, uh, so this one is what LP 1 1, this would be LP 1 2, its value of b is equal to, what about LP 1 3, why did not we have an LP 1 3? I could have had an LP 1 3, there could have been a family this, if I could extend this maybe there is something like this, but the point of intersection is happening outside the range B equal to B uh, 0 to 1, which means for the highest order mode, the B should always, the point of intersection should always be greater than 0. So, the cutoff mode or the cutoff condition of a mode is where when your B is equal to 0. So, for a given V, now you can find out what is a cutoff mode. What would be the condition for cutoff mode? For any mode where its B is equal to 0, that is the cutoff condition, okay. So, that is where we are coming to cutoff modes. Uh, highest order mode will have a B greater than 0 
and so the cutoff condition for a guided mode if it has to be guided in the system b should be at least 0 or equal to 0 we do not consider it as a supported mode it has to be sli a number slightly greater than 0. And if your b equal to 0 what really happens your propagation constant will be the same as a propagation constant in the cladding which means it is getting supported in the cladding and not inside the core of the fiber. It is a cladding mode and not a uh, guided mode in the system. We also discussed cladding mode or what is called as a radiation mode and not it is not a guided mode of the system. So, how does now one define the cutoff condition? Let us say now we want to find out what is a cutoff condition. What do I have to do to find the cutoff condition now? I want to find out the cutoff condition for a uh, mode, a given mode. Cutoff condition means the value of V that will give me B. So, I just have to uh, rewrite my transcendental equation with B equal to 0. That is my cutoff condition, right. So, for L equal to 0 mode, this was the transcendental equation, and L equal to greater than or equal to 1, this was the transcendental equation. In this, if I substitute V equal to uh, B equal to 0, because that is my cutoff condition, I get the cutoff condition of the modes, which means that for L equal to 0, what happens if I substitute B equal to 0 in this equation? It will be V times this, this will go off, right. This will go off, this will go off the right side becomes 0. So, for L equal to 0, what is the cutoff condition? V j 1 V cutoff, the cutoff value of V for which B equal to 0, right, is e, uh, divided by j naught V is equal to 0, which means that j 1 V c is equal to 0, okay. For L equal to 1, for instance, what would it be? you will start using these equations. Uh, v, okay, this should also be V c, right. Not that it does, it matters here. J naught V c by, because L equal to 1. So, this is J naught and this is J 1. This is also V c. This must be equal to 0. So, the cutoff condition for L equal to 1 mode is this. Uh, cutoff condition for L greater than uh, uh, equal to 1 mode is Similarly, j l minus 1 v c, I mean this numerator must be equal to 0. Of course, v c equal is equal to 0 is not accepted because of the specific nature of this equation. So, the question is how do you now find out this cutoff condition? I mean this is just saying for l equal to 0, the cutoff condition is j 1 v c equal to 0. What does it physically mean to us? Wherever you have your j1 vc, j1 function, you remember j1 and j0 j are Bessel functions, right. So, wherever you have the j1 function going to 0, that argument of, so if you have j1 x, right, the argument of x corresponding to j1 vc or this function going to 0 is where my cutoff of the mode is which means that tells me what is a v number for l equal to 0 mode. So, how do I find that now? I have to know, I have to sketch my j naught j 1 etcetera, right. So, this is my j naught j 1, I am just recollecting what this is. So, the job for you is to find the cutoff wavelength, Cut, let us find out what is the cutoff v c for first 3 modes, what would it be? Where is j 1 cutoff for the first 3 mode is first mode is l equal to 0. So, that corresponds to j 1 of v c is equal to 0, which is j 1 in this the green curve. The green curve says that the first value of 0 of it is corresponding to uh, this of course, is x this is equal to 0, which means what is the cutoff condition corresponding to uh, the first mode uh, or the fundamental mode it says v c v c equal to 0, because j 1 v c equal to 0 at j 1 of v c equal to 0 at v c is equal to 0. Uh, for l equal to 1, so this is for l p 0 1 mode, for l equal to 1 you have the l p 1 1 mode. In fact, uh, I, I have to say this as 
L equal to 1 mode not specifically LP11 mode. LP11 is the first mode of L equal to 1, okay, first possible solution of L equal to 1. What is the cutoff condition for that? J0 Vc is equal to 0. Now, where is J0 Vc becoming 0? This red curve wherever it hits 0 and if I look at that value that number is 2.4048. Okay. So, the Bessel function, the 0th order Bessel function drops to 0, first 0 at 2.4048, that is the nature of the Bessel function. So, which means that my cutoff V number is 2.4048. What does this mean physically? If you have a V which is less than this 2.4048, what does it mean? It means that L equal to 1 is not supported. So, which mode is supported? Only L equal to 0 is supported and that is why it becomes a single mode fiber. And what is the meaning of saying that the cutoff condition for the first mode is uh, Vc equal to 0? By definition it means that if your Vc is less than 0, then no mode is supported. But Vc is something which is 2 pi by lambda a root of n 1 square minus n 2 square with this lambda is in uh, free space. This is k naught a into root of n 1 square minus n 2 square. So, if this number is negative and there is no physical reason why this number has to be negative. So, which is why we say the fiber will always support the fundamental mode. There is no cutoff for the fundamental mode. It will always support the fundamental mode. But if it were to support L equal to 1 mode, your V c should be greater than 2.4048. Now, what is the cutoff condition for L equal to 2 mode? That is the third set of modes. You have to now look at this. L equal to 2 would mean that I should look at J1. So, that is 3.817. So, if your V number turns out to be something like uh, 3, for instance, what are the supported modes? If your V number is let us say V is equal to 3, what are your supported modes? It is somewhere here 0 1 1 and uh, 0 1 and L p 1 1 modes. So, just by calculating your V numbers, you can now calculate which are the modes supported by the system, which is why that V number had a lot of relevance. But in order to find what are the supported modes or the profiles of the supported modes, what do you need to know now? you have to know all the supported all the allowed values of B. So, you have to solve the transcendental equation get the allowed values of B from that you can calculate what the modal profiles are. 